All right, so right off the bat, this video is going to be titled Why I Should Care About Crypto or something like that. Um, but this video is going to be about more than that, right? It's really like why you should care about investing in general. I'm going to explain things in a way that if you just don't know much about investing in general, this video will be a great jumping off point and you'll be able to kind of just understand that whole world, right? Um, and I will specifically, though, get into crypto later on in the video as this is the main thing that it's about, right? So just a little background on me before we even get started. I'm not like a professional career investor, right? A lot of this stuff I learned because I am a cinematographer, actually, and I just happened to start working with a bunch of like well-known, I'm not gonna name drop them or whatever in this video, but a lot of relatively well-known, very successful investors uh, just filming for them and just by being around them and like, you know, also reading books and studying on my own, uh, I've been able to learn a lot of this stuff over the course of like several years, right? And so in the description, I will have a bunch of resources of like books I've read and people that I watch to help you get fully caught up to speed. Because if I was trying to get everything <laughs> in my brain out to you guys, it would take like hours and hours and uh you know we don't have that much time i just want this to be a succinct uh, thing for you to really understand the big picture about why you should be investing and why specifically you should be investing in crypto right so first let's just talk about the big idea right in our society we are generally forced to buy a lot of things with debt OK, so if you want to buy a house, generally, most of us cannot just buy the house in cash. Also, if you want to buy a car, you know, a house and a car are two of the biggest things you need like to function in society. And just in general, a lot of things uh, kind of force us, in a sense, to incur debt. Right. Um, it's great if you can't uh, if you can avoid incurring any debt great but for most normal people that's just not the case right so with the rest of our money it is important to buy assets that are going to appreciate because what you're dealing with in reality is you have your debts which could be student loan debt a mortgage your car note and all of those have certain rates to them so you might have like a five percent rate on your car note a three percent rate on your mortgage a 20 percent rate on your credit card so on and so forth on this amount and you're just gonna constantly be paying that back you know over like in many cases like 30 years like a mortgage you know standard mortgages are like 30 years so to balance that out and possibly eliminate that and kind of free yourself up right you want to buy things that are assets that appreciate in value at higher rates than the debts that you kind of have to incur because of how our society works right so for example you might have a house that has like a 4% rate on the mortgage, right? But in your retirement account, you can uh, buy into index funds that will give you a 10% rate of return, right? So you can kind of balance out your you know, wealth and your assets between things that are simply generating interest and things that are, well, generating interest for you in your favor and things that are essentially generating interest for someone else that you're going to have to pay to make them more wealthy instead of yourself, right? So that is essentially what we are facing and why you need to buy assets that are going to appreciate, right? And a quick fact, right, is that most millionaires are made of like two ways, mainly in business, just having your own business and buying real estate. Right. And then there are some that are made through investing. But actually, most billionaires 
are made through something called private equity or like venture capital investing, right? So first, let's just talk about those two. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about stocks and things like that, just so you can understand the entire landscape of like, what are your options for what to invest in before we get specifically into crypto and why I think you should consider that specifically. Okay. So real estate is a great investment. Actually, as I said, most millionaires are made by investing in real estate, right? And the reason why real estate is such a great asset to buy is because one, the rates to buy them are relatively low, actually. Right now, not really the case, not so much, but a couple of years ago. And in the future, again, the rates will be, uh, you know, a little lower so that um, it's not causing you to incur so much debt, right? And then fundamentally, what makes the price, and this is something important to understand about all markets when it's talking about the stock market, crypto market, real estate market, what causes the price to go up and down is supply and demand. So what does that mean? When a lot of people are buying, price goes up. When a lot of people are selling, price goes down. And if it's perfectly balanced, prices would relatively kind of stay even, right? And what's so great about real estate is that there is a finite amount of land on the planet Earth, right? So everyone knows that eventually all of the land will be taken up and the demand for a home is always there because unfortunately there are homeless people in this world, but generally everyone in this world needs a place to live and should have a home and wants a home, right? It is a basic human need. So you have a great amount of demand, but you have a limited supply meaning the price has to go up over time, right? And that's also what makes it so safe because the demand is so ubiquitous for a place to live. Uh, it's something where it kind of will always exist. And that is why companies like BlackRock have bought up massive amounts of single family homes because they want to control that market and make it so that instead of you owning the place to live, they do, and you always have to go through them, right? We might get to BlackRock more in this video if I decide to go into that, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much the case with real estate. And it's a great investment. It's relatively safe, uh, you know, depending on when you, you buy and depending on, you know, of course, like, are you buying a house in a good area, so on and so forth, right? But, you know, it's generally safe. The problem with real estate, uh, if you've ever bought a house or if you want to buy a house, you might know this, is that it's very, one, cost prohibitive, and two, it can be uh, time intensive, right? So I am right now in the home that my wife and I own, right? in order to buy this house. And we had like the first time home buyers deal. Like once you exhaust that, you need even more money, but you need a significant amount of savings in order to even attempt to buy a house. Because on top of, you know, just uh, your down payments, there are lots of fees and things like that. And you need a good amount of recurring income because besides just the mortgage payment, there's all your bills, there's property taxes and all that stuff, right? So there are certain times, like right when I was fresh out of college, I probably couldn't have just bought a house, right? <laughs> because I just didn't have enough money saved and my salary was very low. So Real estate is great, but it is a little prohibitive. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't in this video invest in real estate. In fact, I think you should, but it there's a lot of barriers to it versus some of the other things that I'm going to talk about later in this video, right? So let's quickly also just touch on how the billionaires are made through private equity slash venture capital investing. What that is, is if you have a ton of money, which boom, that already <laughs> makes it prohibitive for most people, right? If you have just millions of dollars sitting, then you could find an entrepreneur that you believe in that's building a business and you essentially just give them a large sum of money to help them start the business and like play, pay their employers, so on and so forth in order to get a piece of that business, a piece of the ownership or like some kind of return on that investment, right? Uh, now, usually these deals are at the minimum 
hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? And if not millions of dollars that you're just giving to someone for a chance at massive profits, right? And it is somewhat risky, of course, like if you have that much money, you're doing your due diligence to make sure that you're investing in an entrepreneur and business that you believe in. But regular people just can't do that. You cannot do that unless you just have millions of dollars sitting, right? So that's very prohibitive. Again, it, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be involved in it. And now there are some ways um, where you can get involved in like, you know, VC type investing now uh, with uh, different platforms. I can, you know, put links in the description. So make sure you check the description because there's going to be a lot of stuff in there. Um, where you can kind of get in on that for like lower amounts where you can get shares into companies early. And that's something I've done and explored myself. But generally speaking, there's like a limited amount of deals, a limited amount of companies that go that route. And so it's, it's not as big of a market, e even, you know, the ones that you have access to versus like if you just had a lot of money. OK, so that's why that's, you know, j again, it's great if you can, but most people simply can't. OK, so that's real estate. That's venture capitalists. Th those are things you can worry about a little bit later because that's how millionaires and billionaires are made. But if you're watching this video, you're probably not a millionaire or a billionaire, right? <laughs> because if you were, you would probably already know everything that I'm going to tell you here. This is kind of the path to get there, right? So let's talk about the next uh, very common investment, which is like your retirement account that you might have with your job. 401k, when I was a teacher, I had like a 403b, so on and so forth. Those are also great. I'm not telling you to like ditch that because a lot of people in crypto will say ditch that completely and just only buy crypto. That sucks. Well, not exactly. Right. With my 401k up to a certain amount, my employer matches. So that's essentially just free money. Right. So you never want to like ignore the possibility of just getting free money. And in your retirement accounts, 401ks, IRAs, all those things, you can usually make selections of how you want your money invested. And that's going to be mainly index funds. Now, index funds are relatively safe. They'll have like track records of like, this is how many percentage points you generally get over the course of one year, five year, 10 years. And you can look at that data and make your selections, you know, as you will, right? in your retirement account. And again, this is great because in a lot of cases, your employer, if you have a job, are going to match this. So you should at least contribute to that, right, up to the point that your employer will match because again, that's just free money, okay? Um, the thing about that is those percentages, as you heard, is like, you know, 10%, 15%, you know, those are relatively low percentages. Now, it is better, and that is, if you notice, probably a higher percentage return than your mortgage. And in fact, this is a great place to invest because if you are like, you know, fresh out of college, you start investing in that, and then, you know, 10 years down the line, you want to buy a house, it's actually set up so that you can, at that point, you know, for certain special occasions like buying a house, withdraw that invested money. So it's like a savings account that's better than a high yield savings account kind of right so that's something to think about but that's something that although it's relatively safe grows slowly over time and i think everyone should do that because it again is relatively safe uh but it's slow right and uh it's something it's just kind of like a long-term like safety net for you for when you're old essentially because who knows what's going on with social security who knows what's going like you know we've heard some wild statements about retirement ages and social security and things like that so you want to make sure that you're just investing in some relatively safe stuff and those things are not cost prohibitive like real estate and venture capital investing so you should definitely look into that in my opinion right but as i mentioned before 
it is slower. So that's just something that you think about contributing to. It's something that I just do automatically. It just comes out of my check. I'm not actively managing. I'm not selling anything. It just goes there and it's just a peace of mind thing to have so that in 30 years when I'm like ready to like maybe not work anymore, even though like I try and live a life where I enjoy what I'm doing. So it's like I could probably work forever because like I enjoy the work that I do and I avoid trying to do work that I wouldn't enjoy because I just don't want to spend my life that way. Other topic completely. Um, yeah, you know, I have something there and it's relatively safe. Don't have to think about it. Now, this is where we get to crypto, right? Because in crypto, you can get really high percentages really fast. Now, that does come with increased risk versus all of the other asset classes that I just talked about, okay? And you hear a lot of people trying to you know, get people away from crypto saying that, oh, it's so risky, it's so volatile. But part of that is simply because it is a brand new market, right? Crypto in general, right? The first one ever, the one that most people have heard of if they know anything about crypto is Bitcoin. And that has not even been around for like 20 years at this point, right? So it's very new. And if you understand and have studied the markets even a little bit, you would know that all new markets are volatile. Back in the 1920s, the stock market was much more volatile than it is right now. And that's why we have entities in the government like the SEC, because a lot of the stuff that people are complaining about in crypto, like, oh, this is a Ponzi, this is that, that was all going on in stocks back in the day too. It's just that they haven't caught up you know, to crypto though at this point and that hasn't evened out right so this is why it's such an amazing opportunity you hear all the boomers and stuff talk about investing blah 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 but you look at it and it's like well i mean 10 percent is nice but it's not gonna like change my life crypto is actually a vehicle that could actually be life-changing for you, okay? Again, this is not financial advice. I'm just trying to educate you on the entire landscape of what's going on out there and show you your options and explain to you why you need to care about crypto, okay? So let's first talk about uh, Bitcoin specifically in general, right? It is the first crypto and like real estate, it has a sort of scarcity in the same way that there's a limited amount of land. So there's kind of, in a sense, a limited amount of housing that you can have. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin, right? And, you know, some people try and say, oh, well, it's just code. Someone could change that. But the way it's designed is that literally all of the well, this is getting a little technical, but like all of the Bitcoin nodes, meaning like everyone who's kind of like involved heavily in playing in Bitcoin would have to all agree to increase the amount of Bitcoin, which is not going to happen because it would be negative for them if they just allowed the more printing essentially of bitcoin like the way we print more money and that you know creates more inflation to an extent there are other factors to inflation actually but you know bitcoin is not inflationary in that way in the same way that real estate is to in a sense in that it is a scarce asset there's only ever going to be a certain amount of bitcoin right and the reason why right now is pivotably important for you to get into Bitcoin and crypto in general is because big companies know how earlier in the video I mentioned that Block, BlackRock was buying up a bunch of real estate like single family homes right now them and a bunch of other you know hedge funds and things like that they are also buying up bitcoin so regardless of what you know all you hear in the news and different people telling you all this stuff about oh bitcoin's a scam blah 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 it's not okay blackrock and arc and all of these different funds are well and 
And all of these different uh, funds are buying up massive amounts of Bitcoin, right? So the supply is getting more and more scarce. And the demand over time is going to increase. And that means the price is going to do this, right? Now, the thing about Bitcoin is because of something called the halving, where the pretty much the way Bitcoin works is that people on computers mine it the same way a resource like gold would be mined in the earth. You have to use energy like computational power in order to mine bitcoin so essentially it is a store of energy just like gold would be like a store of a mineral or so on and so forth bitcoin is a vehicle for storing energy this is something that michael saylor talks about a lot now he's a little bit of a moon boy uh her him and kathy wood like they will tell you bitcoin's going a million that's not what i'm telling you here i'm not telling you it's going a million personally i think maybe like 150,000 in like the next two years or something like that maybe maybe not even that right but those are still bigger gains that you're going to see on a lot of stocks right but we're not going to get into specific price predictions because that's actually like a fool's game like you don't it, it, the more you learn about investing, you're, you're going to know, like, you don't want to just look for a specific number because that gets people wrecked. OK, but let, let's bring it back. Right. <laughs> I was talking about Bitcoin mining. Right. So there's something called the having that happens. And that is coming up in April. When that happens, the in the code of Bitcoin, the rewards that you get for mining Bitcoin lessens. And when that happens, of course, that always creates a supply shock and more people start getting in and there's a lot of like hype and whatnot and the price goes up. And this has been happening on a pretty like predictable cycle. Um, but there are other cycles at play and it's not to say that the cycle will continue to play out exactly the same way it has always played out over the past, like uh, I think, 12 or so years that we've like had this data to track right that's not what i'm saying because again a lot of people on youtube will tell you that and they'll make you think this is just like a sure thing it's just so easy that's not what i'm saying what i am saying is there's a lot of rich people, a.k.a. BlackRock and all of these companies who BlackRock owns most of Apple stock. They own, they own a lot of most of everything. Right. So if they're buying it right, you know that it has some value. And right now you have the ability to buy something and own something that they need, that they will need to buy. OK, this is very rare. This is very rare for you to have any form of leverage over these kinds of entities and just be able to just go and get something like I was telling you real estate you can't just go buy a house unless you have a certain amount of savings and you have good credit and you have like all of these things you can't just go and do that right now if you only have five dollars you could go and cash app and kind of get bitcoin or let's say you have like you know a little bit more money because I wouldn't say five dollars let's say you could go on coinbase right now buy Bitcoin, take that Bitcoin off of Coinbase, put it in your own hardware wallet, and you actually own that Bitcoin. It's not like when you are in your 401k account and you're buying into this index fund and you're going through BlackRock and the only way or like Fidelity for me, that's who I have, right? Like I'm going through Fidelity, I'm paying their fees. I'm, you know, I, like if I want to sell it, I got to go through them. And it's like very controlled by them. Crypto is not at that point now. But the reason that they're buying it up is because they want to make it like that. Okay. So this is a very pivotal point because this is essentially your last chance probably like 99%, you know, probable that this is your last kind of chance to get it at a relatively low price, right? Because right now we're like, I think like 40% down from the all time highs. Um, and, you know, again, uh, many projections are projecting it will be much higher, right? So now and in the next coming months before any hype comes in after the halving and stuff is a great time to just be accumulating Bitcoin, right? 
And so because of that, all of that, what I was just saying, right, the scarcity, the supply and demand situation, that's why you should be getting Bitcoin. And out of all the crypto assets, Bitcoin is the safest. Most of the good investors that I know have at least some of their portfolio in Bitcoin. Some of them who are like, you know, want to be edgy, they might do ETH instead or whatever, because that's the next biggest one that's been relatively stable for a long time. But Bitcoin is actually much, much safer than ETH. And the returns that you're going to get from ETH, in my opinion, aren't going to be so much better than Bitcoin that it warrants you just not having any Bitcoin and just having ETH. Although I think ETH is also going to go up. I think that everyone right now should try and get Bitcoin. Again, not financial advice. This is just my opinion. But I will tell you, I am getting Bitcoin, but I'm also getting a lot of other cryptos, right? And these are called altcoins. Now, the reason why Bitcoin is the king is because it's the oldest, it has the longest track record. It is relatively... I don't want to say stable because all of crypto is a very volatile market compared to other things. But you see that these large entities are buying a lot of Bitcoin. There are funds like Grayscale where see like a lot of these companies will not reveal this to you. But a lot of companies have already had a lot of Bitcoin through Grayscale. They were the one place in the U.S where you could uh, essentially get Bitcoin in like a very safe and legal way if you were like a company. And a lot of them got it through Grayscale. So they hold a lot of Bitcoin. And part of what caused the price relatively recently to kind of fall was Grayscale selling Bitcoin, which caused some people to panic. But in reality, all that's happening is they're selling it because the ETFs were approved. So people are leaving the fund. So as they do that, as people want to exit the fund, they have to sell that Bitcoin. But they're just going to buy more Bitcoin in the form of the ETF, right? So this is not going away. Don't let all of this stuff. There's a lot of like news and headlines and stuff. And all of that stuff is just noise. It doesn't matter. All that matters is the simple supply and demand thing where it's very obvious that there's demand because these big entities are buying Bitcoin and you should too. But if you want more X's, if you want more multiples than Bitcoin, because Bitcoin might do like, let's say a three or four X. Usually that's kind of what it does. I think it usually does like about a four X, something like that over the course of like the cycle um, from like around where we are now, like this point might do like a three or four X or something like that. Right. But something like, let's say Solana, people are thinking, oh, that might 10x, so on and so forth, right? So what you need to understand about the broader market in crypto, right, is that one, there are a lot of scams. That is true. There's a lot of just BS that you should not, 99.9% .9 of it, you shouldn't invest in, right? And so you do have to do your due diligence when investing in crypto. However the multiples that you can get if you are able to be successful in this market will dwarf any of the other asset classes and will even dwarf what you can get with Bitcoin. Okay, so that's part of what I do personally. And I have seen some success even just trading, not even long term investing. That's, you know, what I'm doing now also is dollar cost averaging into certain coins. I'm not going to discuss what those are here. If you want to ask me about it, maybe I'll make more videos about that kind of stuff. But this isn't even a crypto channel. I just make like videos about things that I think are important and interesting at this point, right? So that's not necessarily what this channel is about at this point. If people ask me, then sure, I can make more videos about it. But I just want you guys to look into it because you can make like 10 X's, 20 X's, like with relative ease, I know that it sounds like a scam because a lot of them are, but if you are able to find those diamonds in the rough, those uh, diamonds in the piles of like absolute garbage, right? Then you can actually do that. 
And it's not going to be like with stocks where you're doing that over the course of five, 10, 30 years, right? It's going to be over the course of like two years, right? One year in some cases. And if you, well, I don't know, maybe I'll put this as like a, one of the highlights on my Instagram, but I've literally like gone on my Instagram story and given out like just short term trades to do where people could have bought things. Like I think one of them that I did was prime. It's something that you could get on Coinbase. I recommended that like the people buy it. I think it was like under four, definitely under four bucks. I can't remember the exact price. It might've been like under three bucks. I can't remember. And right now it's sitting, I think above seven bucks at least. Right. And at the time, like I told them to close the trade, I just, you know, waited till it did like a hundred percent profit. It took literally like two weeks and said, Hey, okay, you could sell now. Right. So again, I wouldn't suggest just trading for people because that's like a more advanced thing. Most people should dollar cost average hold for more than a year because of tax purposes, capital gains, look into it. Um, and then like sell after that, after holding a long period of time. But I say that to say I showed people and I did that also with like render, like just just giving away for free. Like that's how not I don't want to say easy, but that's how um, accessible it is. Right. It's not I don't want to fool you and lie to you and say that it's easy and that you need more knowledge. But I've been able to learn this stuff and you can, too. OK. And I've been able to show people how it, over the course of like just weeks, they could double their money on an investment. Right. And my thesis is that over like the next year to like 18 months, a lot of people will be able to 10 and 20 X. I know it sounds crazy compared to like stocks and all of these things like their money and it's not inaccessible right now. You can go with as little money as you have. It could be 20 bucks, whatever. Go on Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini, get some Bitcoin right now and really own it for yourself. You can get some altcoins right now and really own them for yourselves and sell them back and make a lot of money. OK, and I tell you this because as we know, BlackRock and all of these other companies are coming for you. They're, they're coming for all of us. And they want to make it so that we are all saddled with debt. It comes back to what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. A lot of us, myself included, we got student loan debt, right? And while we are funding these wars and things all over the globe, that's not getting forgiven, guys. Like, I don't know. Like, maybe it's like, but it seems like a pipe dream to me. I don't think anyone's coming to save us, right? So this is your opportunity right now that we have before us, especially specifically over the next coming months before I and many other believe many other people believe the market will take off, right? To go ahead and get in on this opportunity. Now, I don't have any Weeble link or anything like that to put in the description. I'm only going to put helpful links in there. I'm not selling you anything. I'm, I don't even have a course. Maybe one day I might make a course if people are like really interested on like how to do it because it is kind of like a lot to teach. Like I don't know if I necessarily feel like just making all these YouTube videos about that because I just like making these videos where I just talk to the camera about different topics. But I'm not going to say I would never do that because I think it could be helpful for a lot of people, but that's not what I'm here to do. That's not the point of this video. This point of the point of this video is to tell you they're trying to saddle you with debt. They're trying to saddle you. <coughs> <coughs> so passionate about this. I'm coughing. Uh, they are trying to saddle you with these interest rates and these things that you have to pay off for the rest of your life. And the only way, uh, if you were not able to avoid this, like many of us just ended, we didn't know, we just took out student loans, like we didn't really get it, whatever, you call it irresponsible, whatever you want. Uh, but that, you know, that's the reality, that's the situation, right? And one of the only ways that you're going to get out of this, right, is to buy assets that are going to outpace those debts, 
And if you have an asset class like crypto that, while it is new and volatile, can provide you a vehicle to get rid of that debt and actually give you cash on hand much sooner, that means you can live a good life much sooner instead of waiting until you're 60 and your knees don't work right, okay? So that is why you should care about crypto and why you should be investing in crypto, right? So if you have um, more questions, if you want me to talk more about like specific altcoins and things like that, you can um, ask me in the comments. Maybe I'll make more videos and stuff like that. I don't know because I don't necessarily want to turn this into a crypto channel. I'm just kind of an artist and like person who just likes to talk about things, not a professional investor, as I've said. But I think I honestly think this is too important that like I couldn't make like not make a video about this. Like this is because once BlackRock and them take over, it's going to become just like stocks where, yeah, it'll probably be a little bit more stable, but you're not going to be able to get these kinds of returns. And they've started the takeover. It's already begun. OK, I don't know if like in five or 10 years, this level of opportunity will still be here. So I'm telling you now, I've been telling people on Instagram now, that's why I put those trades up for people to see like, hey, I legitimately made 100% in two weeks. Imagine what you could do over the course of a year, two years, right? Like this is an amazing opportunity and I don't want anyone of like my generation and younger to miss out on this because you can miss out on this. You can't just like wait and like, oh, okay, yeah, in 10 years when I care a little bit more about my finances, then I'll do this because this opportunity is not going to be here. There might be some other opportunity or something, but I don't know that. I'm just telling you about what I know right now, okay? And yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't want to make this video overly long. Just ask me questions in the comments if you have questions. I will put a lot of resources in the description for you to learn about this. But I'm just going to stop here, right? If you, know, if you don't get it, I don't know what to tell you, okay? You, you need to care about this. You should be investing in some kind of way. And I think crypto is a really good way to think about, especially if you're young, right? Because like, think about the risk to reward opportunity, right? I'm not telling you to take out your whole 401k and put it into crypto. I would say like, hey, if you got like an extra $100 a month that you could save by not going out as much for the next like couple of months, the next six months or whatever, Take that money, take that hundred bucks a month or two, like however much you could afford, right? And just buy some crypto, right? Buy Bitcoin, buy QNT, you know, buy Chainlink, right? Buy these things and hold them for a year and then sell them and see how much money you have. Right. Because that's like, you know, a hundred bucks a month is like the amount of money that like especially people in their 20s and stuff, you could just waste going out and stuff. Right. And it's not something that you want to let pass you by. OK, it really is not because the way this society works is they will try and drown you in debt and create those percentages for themselves, okay? The elite, they will create those percentages for themselves where you are paying them interest, right? Making them wealthy instead of you accruing any kind of interest, okay? So please, look into this, okay? Again, I'm not selling you anything. I don't have any affiliate links. I don't, there's no, like, I'm, I'm not trying to, like, scam you in any way. I just want to help you. Please look into it. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's the end of the video. Um, yeah, that's all. <laughs> Hope you guys have a you know good successful life. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe, like, comment. I should have said that stuff earlier, but you know it is what it is. We're here now, and now we are out. <laughs> all right.